Hi there. Today we're going to talk about building a recommendation engine with Apache Spark and Elasticsearch. The journey repository contains a demo Jupyter notebook. And in that notebook, we'll walk through the steps of loading a movie rating dataset into Spark, using Spark data frame and SQL operations to clean up the data and load it into Elasticsearch. Next, we'll use Spark's machine learning library to train a collaborative filtering recommendation model and export the resulting model into Elasticsearch. Finally, using Elasticsearch queries and a custom plugin, we'll generate example recommendations. Before we can do this, we need to follow a few steps to set up our environment. The first of these is to clone the journey repository, and then set up all the components required. Uh, that is Elasticsearch, the Elasticsearch Spark connector, and Apache Spark. Now it takes a little while to download all these files, so I've gone ahead and uh, done that already. And you can see that we've uh, unzipped them and they each have a folder. First of all, we're going to set up Elasticsearch and we're going to need to install the Elasticsearch vector scoring plugin. This is a custom plugin that allows us to score documents based on raw vectors using either dot product or cosine similarity. And this effectively allows us to turn Elasticsearch into a recommendation engine. We won't go into how that works under the hood here, but the links section of the journey readme has links to a presentation and slides covering more detail. So next we have to set up this Elasticsearch plugin. So we'll go ahead and install it. And then we'll launch Elasticsearch and just verify that the plugin has loaded correctly. You can see that uh, the Elasticsearch vector scoring plugin has been loaded. Next we have to set up the Elasticsearch Spark connector. And that is provided by the Elasticsearch Hadoop project, which brings together a bunch of Hadoop compatible storage and processing engines and provides connectors uh, between those systems and Elasticsearch. I've already downloaded and unzipped the Elasticsearch Hadoop file with the Spark connector, so we'll go ahead and download Apache Spark, which you can do from the Spark download site. Uh, and once we've done that, we've got all the components. Now all we need is, the, uh, is our data. Uh, we're going to be using the movie lens data, which is a, a well-known recommendations data set. And it consists of ratings given by a set of users to movies. And there's a bunch of different files. We're going to use the MovieLens small data set, which is 100,000 ratings, 9,000 movies, and 700 users. So let's uh, go ahead and download that data set into the data subfolder of our journey repository. And once it's downloaded, we can unzip it and have, have a look inside. You see that uh, we've got a few CSV files containing the ratings data, as well as um, a few others. And we'll get into the details in the notebook which we are now ready to launch. So it's a Jupyter notebook, so we need to install Jupyter if you haven't done so already. And we're also going to be using the Movie Database API to access movie posters to make our recommendation demo look a bit better. So we, we can install the TMDB simple Python client. And if you don't have an, a, uh, an API key, you need to sign up for the, at the Movie Database API and follow the instructions. Uh, so go to settings under the profile, click on the API menu item and then create. Um, and you'll have to fill in a, a little form and get uh, get access to an API key. And once you have that, um, you can put it into the, the relevant field in the notebook in order to get access to the, the API and the movie posters. So once you launch the notebook, click on the notebook subfolder and it's the Elasticsearch Spark Recommender uh, notebook. You can execute a single cell and move to the next cell using shift enter. And our, the first step is to prepare our data. So earlier we downloaded the ML latest small data. Um, and that has a, a few CSV files of which we, we're going to be working with three. Ratings.csv contains the movie rating data. Links contains the external database IDs uh, for each movie and we'll use that to look up movie posters. And movies.csv contains movie metadata, including the title and the genre. So let's go ahead and load up the ratings data. And we can see that uh, each rating has a user ID, a movie ID, the rating, and a timestamp. Those timestamps are in seconds, and we need milliseconds for Elasticsearch. So we'll write a Spark user defined function to convert them into millisecond timestamps. Next, we'll look at the movie metadata, and we have a movie ID, a title, and genres. Now, the genres is a sort of 
pipe delimited string, which is a bit difficult to work with. So again, we'll, we'll use a Spark UDF to split that string up into an array of genres, which is going to be easier for us to work with when we are writing to Elasticsearch. The next bit of cleanup we want to do is extracting the release date from the title and splitting those two fields up. So we apply another UDF and we see we have a movie title, release date and genres. And finally, we're going to join the links table with our movie data table uh, to get an extra column TMDB ID, which is the movie database ID. And we're going to use that ID to access the API uh, and get the movie poster. So you can put your API key in here, run the cell, and you should see a Toy Story poster if you've done the, the API access successfully. So next, we're going to load the data into Elasticsearch. We'll check that our Elasticsearch cluster is accessible. And we're going to create a uh, index mappings for users, movies, and the rating events. So we're not going to go into too much detail here, uh, but essentially an index mapping is similar to a database uh, table schema. What's important here is that we're going to uh, be using a custom analyzer, which we need to, uh, to use in order for our vector scoring plugin to work correctly. And we can also see the mappings here for all the different fields in our ratings events, uh, as well as our user and movie metadata. This model field uh, uses the custom analyzer to, um, to store the, the uh, model factor, which we're going to be using later. And now we can use Spark's uh, data source APIs and the Elasticsearch Spark connector to simply write the data out to Elasticsearch using native Spark uh, APIs. And we can uh, check that that has been written correctly, and we see that uh, each rating event there has a rating, timestamp, user ID, movie ID. And that's what it looks like in Elasticsearch. Now, because we're using a search engine, we can harness all the power of search. For example, we can issue a date range query to count the number of uh, events in a certain date range. So let's go ahead and write the movie data. Um, and again, we can use search to, for example, find all movies with the title uh, Matrix. And you see the Matrix, the Matrix Reloaded, and the Matrix Revolutions. And now we come to the machine learning part of our notebook. Uh, the notebook has details about matrix factorization and alternating least squares, which is the specific algorithm that we'll be using. But we won't go into all that detail here, though there are some links for further reading. So now we're going to go the opposite direction, and we're actually going to load uh, data from Elasticsearch into Spark, again using Spark's data source APIs. And that data happens to be in exactly the right format that we need to feed it into Spark's implementation of alternating least squares, ALS. So we can just run that model. And at the, at the end, what we get back is a set of user factors and a set of item factors, which are the factor vectors for each of the users and items. We'll create a few utility functions to allow us to convert vectors back and forward, uh, and then convert uh, those factor vectors into the correct format to be writing to Elasticsearch. And now we'll go ahead and write our movie and our user vectors into our Elasticsearch index. Once that's done, we can just uh, double check that things have been written correctly. And there we see the model factor has been written in the correct form to Elasticsearch. So now we've uh, trained our model and exported it to Elasticsearch, and it's time to have some fun with recommendations. We'll need to create a few uh, utility functions. First of all, we need a method to get the movie poster from the Movie Database API. And this uh, function query method is really the meat of our recommendation engine. So you, we can see that it is an Elasticsearch custom score query, and we're going to be using the vector scoring plugin. We're going to be querying against uh, each uh, factor vector in the model factor field, and the query vector is going to be, depending on whether we're generating recommendations for users or similar items, it's going to be uh, a user vector or a movie vector. And then we have a few functions for uh, getting similar movie recommendations, getting user recommendations, and displaying all of those in a nice way in our notebook. Now, the first kind of recommendation that we'll be generating is similar movies. So given a, a certain movie, we want to find movies that are similar to that movie in some way. This is the classic people who like this movie also like these type of recommendation. So we can see here for Star Wars Episode One. Similar movies are other Star Wars movies, other sci-fi movies, and some action movies. So these recommendations look pretty good. 
but now we can see the real power of using a search engine as our recommender system. So let's say we want to remove any movies with matrix in the title from our recommendations results. We can just issue a search query to the display similar method and that query will directly filter the results of the recommendations that are returned from Elasticsearch. So we can see the matrix has been removed. Let's say we want to ensure that only children's movies are shown to uh, younger viewers. We can also restrict recommendation results to be within the children's genre, for example. And here we see similar movies to Toy Story, uh, all of which are guaranteed to be in the, in the children's uh, movie genre. The second type of recommendation that we might be uh, generating are personalized user recommendations. And the way this works is, uh, given their user's history, uh, what they've rated, and the movies that they've rated highly and that they've uh, rated poorly, we want to find movies that are effectively similar to the ones that they liked and show them those as recommendations. So this user we can see likes a mixture of comedy and sort of sci-fi movies. And the movies recommended are, again, a mixture of comedy and some sci-fi and a little bit of horror, which looks fairly reasonable. And again, we see the power of using a search engine because we can just use Elasticsearch date math to only recommend, for example, more recent movies in the last five years to this user. And we can see that uh, the recommendations returned are only consisting of, uh, of, of more recent releases and they seem to be a little bit more uh, concentrated in the sci-fi and fantasy genres. That brings us to the end of our journey into creating a scalable recommender engine with Spark and Elasticsearch. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.